Hello everyone, this is Leo from Generates Press and Generates Blocks. In this video, I will do a walkthrough of the search template in our site library. Let's get started. We will begin by looking at the home page. Let's click on the first container and take a look at its structure. So we have a grid wrapper with two containers inside of it. The first one has a headline block, a paragraph block, a buttons wrapper with two buttons. And the second one only has a static image. And you can see that there is a shape here which can be configured when you click on the container, go to shapes. So it can be modified right here. It also has a background image, not very visible, but it can be changed on the background. Let's move on to the second container. So inside this container, we again have a grid wrapper with two containers. The first container only has a background image. And then the second container has a headline block plus two paragraph blocks. This dotted image is added in the parent container as a background image. Moving on to the next container, this one's quite simple. We have a grid wrapper with five containers block. Each occupies 20%. So the first one is just a headline block with border left on it. The rest only has a static image in each one. Moving on to the next container, which is the biggest one in the page. So let's take a look at the structure. We have a grid wrapper to start with four containers inside of it. So that's one, two, three, four here. Each one has a headline block plus a paragraph block. If you click on the headline, go to icons, you can edit the icon here. The parent container also has a shape divider, which can be configured under shapes. Let's go back to the block navigation. So we are here. We have a buttons wrapper with one button inside of it. Then we have a headline block. Again, this horizontal line is an icon. Go back to the block navigation again. Next thing we have is a grid wrapper with four containers in it. So that's these four. Then inside of each container, we have another grid wrap. So inside that grid wrap, we have two containers. So that's this one and this one. And they are 25% and 75%. Inside the first container, we have a static image. Inside the second container, we have three headline blocks. So the first one only has an icon. Moving on to the last container of the page. We have a headline block, similar to the testimonials headline here, followed by a grid wrapper with two containers. Each of them has a headline block plus a buttons block. The image here is the background image on the container.
Now let's head to the services page. We will ignore the section first and take a look at the rest of the content. Let's open up the block navigation. So inside the first container, we have a grid wrapper with two containers in it. The first one has a headline block plus two paragraph blocks. The second one only has a static image. The second big container has four containers inside the grid wrapper. Each one has a headline block plus an icon, a paragraph block, and four headline blocks with an icon. Again, this dotted image is uploaded in the container under the background panel. Then lastly, we have a pricing table here. So that's this one right here. So we have a headline block, then a grid wrapper followed by three big containers. Each one has multiple headline blocks plus a buttons block. And the grid wrapper is vertically aligned to center. That's why you see this uneven space here. If we set to top, they will all be aligned to top. Let's close this page and go to the next page. So similar to the previous example, the first container has a grid wrapper with two containers. This dotted image is uploaded under the background. And then this image is uploaded as the background image of the second container. Now moving on to meet our team section. Again, we have a shape divider on the parents container. Then we have a grid wrapper with four containers block with lots of content in it. So start with an image block. Then we have a grid wrapper with two containers, one for the name, the other one for the title. Then we have two headline blocks here, followed by a buttons wrapper with three social icons as buttons. Lastly, for this page, we have a testimonial section similar to the home page, so I won't go through it in details here. Close this page. And the style page just gives you some styles that we use in this site. Contact page. Let's take a quick look. So we have a grid wrapper, the first container with these contents. The second container only has a happy form in it, which can be configured inside the plugin section. You can access that by going to dashboard and forms, all forms. Now let's take a look at the elements involved. The first one is an author bio. So it's like an author box that's added into posts and all posts. So you can see it by going to block and click on a single post. That's this right here. If you have multiple authors and would like to make it dynamic, you can use the dynamic data and blocks from GP Premium 2.0 which I will link below. Next, we have a block 
page hero for the block page header. So that's for this header right here. It's using a static headline block and of course a shape divider on the container. Then we have the footer template. So this is used throughout the entire site. We have a container with a shape divider and then a grid wrapper with three containers in it followed by another container with a grid wrapper and two containers in it. This is assigned to the entire site. Next, we have a global block page hero. So this is just the H1 using dynamic text type title with of course the shape divider. The display rule is entire site, excluding the front page, the block page, and all single posts. So it will be mainly used in static pages like about or services. Next, we have a header element that's assigned to the entire site for the merge option. So that's to merge the page here, here with your header and navigation. It's used throughout every page. Next, we have the post header block hero. So this one is similar to the page hero for the static page. We have H1 title, the post date, and then the post author name, all using the dynamic properties from GP Premium 2.0. You can see them in all single posts. Title, date, and author. Lastly, we have a post with layout element that's used in all single posts. So, for single posts, we want to use the content width of 800 pixels only. You see it's narrow here comparing with the normal pages here. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.